same sort of hood, hooded scarf thing that you saw me make after the cyberpunk lookbook. I've just made it in a delicious thick wool boucle here. This was a fabric that was probably set aside for a, I don't know, Chanel style jacket or something suitably formal like that. I bought this fabric from a D stasher on Etsy and decided to turn it into one of these little hooded scarves. And I paired that with one of my tie-dyed shirts that I made, my geode tie-dyed iced dyed shirts. This ice dyeing that I've been experimenting with this year really resulted in some really cool patterned tops, and this was one of them. And I decided to pull all the colors out of this for this outfit, including this burgundy for this pair of cotton twill trousers that I made out of my 1940s trouser pattern, but then adding cargo pockets to it. These trousers actually have six pockets, unheard of for me. I made these over on Patreon recently. And then the final touch here was these hand wraps, like boxing hand wraps. We all know how active I am and how, you know, capable, um, more so just because uh, for some reason animated characters always tend to wear them and so I decided to throw some on with this look and I do indeed like the result. And speaking of, I don't know, action heroines I am not, this jacket really is an alter ego version of me that I would like to be. I think she owns a spaceship, she might be a successful smuggler. Uh, this is the kind of storyline we have going on with these these ensembles. But here's this color-blocked jacket that I made out of metallic leather and cotton twill. And the main body of the jacket is sewn out of the cotton twill, and then the leather is appliqued on. This is real leather, a distressed metallic leather that I ordered all the way from Italy on Etsy. And don't worry, I'll be showing the entire process for making this jacket, the pattern, the leather. I'll be talking all about it in a dedicated project video soon. And I paired that with my brown wide leg 1940s trousers again, tucked into some suede booties and a simple army green t-shirt from Uniqlo. Also some little round sunglasses that I picked up from Amazon and this lovely brutalist necklace that was a recent gift I received. And for another more, I don't know, firefly leaning uh, space pirate outfit here, um, the more mask side of my style, as I always say, I have these Banana Republic cargo trousers that have the details that I then copied for those that burgundy pair. This was the Banana Republic pair that inspired me to add all those pockets onto my 40s pattern and see if I couldn't make vintage inspired cargo trousers. And then I found this waxed cotton trench coat on Poshmark and this little hooded tank on Poshmark as well. The long, extra long belt tied at the waist here is from Target. I just bought the largest size they had so that I could tie it at the waist like this. And then once again, I have my Vi from Arcane inspired boxing wraps. Though of course, I don't actually want to be Vi, I just want to date Vi, but it's fun to play around. And lastly, I did manage to sneak this other little trouser outfit into the video not in the beginning section where it was planned to go because the song wasn't long enough to slip this in here but I did sneak it in later on. This is another of my ice dyed tie-dye shirts that I made earlier in the year. Some more Banana Republic cargo trousers this time in cotton with some knee-high boots in cognac that are actually INC from Macy's. I bought these boots a couple of years ago for a more Jedi leaning look and they are great to pull out whenever I need to be adventure ready. And this jacket was from a company called Fan Jackets, but my experience with them was a little odd, so I'll detail that below in the description. This coat, on the other hand, was such an amazing find. I picked up this delicious, dark, fig, nice, very heavy quality wool coat at the thrift store here in Colorado for $12.99. Of course, it cost me more than that to get it dry cleaned, but seeing as the jacket was only $13 to start with, I didn't feel too bad about that. This delicious, dark, burgundy, fig, sort of mahogany color. Ooh. So good. I knew it was going to match all the colors I had in mind for this lookbook, um, and so I was extra thrilled if I found this out and about. And of course, I'm wearing that over my ice dyed knit sweater dress here that you saw me make earlier in the year. Again, in this video, I'll put a card up to that and put a link to that video in the description if you're interested in these ice dyeing experiments. But I belted the coat with a similar color burgundy sort of 80s snakeskin belt and a similar clutch actually to that that again was a thrift find from when I was like a teenager. I have these sort of turmeric colored orange gloves to accent this and then my new beaded and sequined cicada brooch pinned on here. I really love all the colors and how this came together. Really just pulling colors out of the print of the dress. Um, all the different colors of dye that I used on this. Russ and burgundies and black cherry etc. And speaking of ice dyeing, of course I ice dyed this cotton gauze shawl here as well. This is one and a half yards of double cotton gauze from Joann's dyed with all different shades of green in that same geode pattern ice dye technique here, worn with a brown sweater dress, again from Macy's. If I buy things, which isn't often, I, I usually shop at Macy's. I don't know what that's about. I have weird brand loyalty going on. I've really been enjoying investing in some sweater dresses, like plain solid color sweater dresses, to pair with large scarves and shawls like this and belt them and wear the scarves draped in different ways. It's a very comfortable outfit for getting on a plane or going to dinner, because uh, you have the stretchiness of the dress and then the kind of elevated quality of the drapey scarf shawl going on. I have some leather lace-up booties with this and sheer brown tights. This lovely clutch that is a wood inlaid with copper wire clutch that I picked up from eBay but it actually was handmade in Java which is pretty cool. 
and then I have a long leather belt here that I picked up from a seller on Etsy and I will link to them below because it's a really nice quality belt. And you can see I'm wearing it again here with this next dress which again involves a little bit more ice dye. This is the ice dye section of this video. So of course I've been practicing with t-shirts, been practicing with scarves. It was time to start dyeing some fabric so I grabbed three yards of white cotton sateen from Joann's, cut it into two one and a half yard pieces and dyed it up ice dyed, geotie dyed, the fabric in these lovely lagoon sort of shades, lots of greens, teals, blues, and rust, to be able to make this dress. And this has a little bit of a tipped up neckline with that same spiky v-neck that I like to do, and a crossover skirt here. Of course, this is sleeveless. I finished this bodice with an all-in-one facing, and this entire process from dyeing the fabric, making the pattern, and then making the dress will be coming to you in a project video soon. And once I had dyed that shawl with all the different shades of green, I knew I had to dye some fabric this colorway as well. So here's some geode tie-dyed cotton sateen once again, but in all shades of green and in one of my now classic wrap back tops because I just love this pattern and I can't ever stop making them. They're my, my basic t-shirt of my wardrobe now, as I always say, they really work for a retro look without having to be kind of fussy in some ways. I love this top pattern. I will put it in a card here above. But I paired this ice dyed geode top with a sleek sort of mid-century modern copper brooch and earrings and then also some copper bracelets. I just kept everything consistent with the accessories. So the copper jewelry ties into the copper metallic clutch, again another Poshmark find, and then these copper metallic leather heels as well. And this is actually a green suede leather skirt that I again picked up on Poshmark, which is my new dangerous website because I didn't used to shop on Poshmark because I knew I would fall in love and wouldn't you know it came true and I grabbed this brown metallic leather jacket on Poshmark as well. It's all about the thrifting online with that Poshmark app. It's just absolutely dangerous, which is why I never played with it before. But for this outfit, I wanted to experiment with doing a very monochromatic ensemble, but then changing up the textures. So we have a leather jacket here with a bronzed metallic finish on the leather, mixed with the faux fur collar, of course. Here's the jacket without that collar on it. Um, I could do either of my brown faux fur collars with this, I think. I will link to my favorite faux fur collars below, by the way, because I do have a favorite. There are many different options out there, and uh, these ones are the most plush and nice size I've found, so I'll link you to these. And I paired these with a brown wool pencil skirt that I made recently. I finally grabbed myself some dark brown wool fabric so I could make a dark brown pencil skirt. I had a brownish pencil skirt in my closet, but it was just a little bit too big, and I just wanted to make one, because that other one had been um, purchased. I just wanted to make one out of my pattern so I would know it would fit me how I like. And then I have a vintage croc embossed leather handbag here from the 1940s or 50s, and then those suede booties once again. And the only pop of color in this was the jade green plastic 80s earrings. And sticking with darkest brown here, this is a dark espresso brown lightweight suiting wool from Mood Fabrics that was actually originally from Donna Karen. They were reselling her dead stock fabric, and I grabbed a couple of yards to make this lovely dress here. This is a little bit more scandalous for me. It has quite the high slit in the crossover front of the skirt here, but this is just that cowl neckline that I showed how to do here on the channel earlier in the year with my tulip sleeves on here as well, a little puffed tulip sleeve going on here. And I, of course, have that new sequin moth in turquoise and gold pinned on here as well. I kept the rest of the accessories in that sort of bronze and turquoise family with, with this patinaed brass cuff and then the iridescent brass beaded handbag from the 1940s here, my remix vintage shoes in brown croc, and again, those sheer brown tights. And I did pair some 1960s rhinestone clip-on earrings with this that are in similar color rhinestones to the sequins I used in the moth brooch. Sticking with the more sophisticated section I have going on here in the monochromatic color scheme, I have this 1950s suit jacket that I picked up on Etsy. It's brown with a little bit of an orange and green fleck in it up close. I'm glad to finally have a brown vintage suit jacket, even if I don't have a matching skirt. And I could, of course, always wear it with this skirt, especially for an evening activity, seeing as it is a bit on the fancier side. This is one of Mood Fabric's luxury brocades. Um, as we know, I'm quite addicted to their Lurex metallic brocades over there, and this one is quite spectacular. It has very detailed floral print going on, and I did manage to pick up a yard and a half of this so I could make the pencil skirt, and then use the leftover rectangle of fabric from below the hem, as it were, just hem that rectangle and use it as a scarf so I can drape this in multiple different ways. And again, I have that belted with the extra long brown leather belt that I picked up on Etsy from a craftsman who makes like Viking and medieval style belts. I asked him to custom make this with the belt loops at my waist measurement and then leave the rest of the belt long so I could tie it like this. And it was a very economical way to get this designer look belt for a little bit cheaper. And I have those same remix brown croc heels on again with this with a 1950s lizard skin bag. And this dress should look quite familiar seeing as it's that asymmetric knit top that I made earlier in the year. That same pattern just added on to my knit skirt pattern so I can link both of the videos for the pattern pieces you'll need for making this dress 
in the description below. I made the asymmetric top, I made the knit skirt before, all I did was join those patterns at the waist to make this dress out of an iridescent stretch crushed velvet here. And I will link to this fabric as well. This, this fabric does come in a couple different colors from this seller, and I thought this was a really fun colorway. It has a bit of a gold undertone to it, which is why I paired it with gold accessories, including this metallic clutch and this very large gold brooch that I picked up at the V&A gift shop. I also have clear vinyl heels on with this. These are a, a little bit of an unstable heel for me. They're very tall and very thin, um, and I'm out of practice, sadly enough. But I really love this outfit. If I, if I had a date to go to, which we all know I don't, I think I would wear this as long as it was, you know, as it was winter. But I will link you to this pattern video here in a card above if you want to give this look a try. And we continue on with the fabulous fabrics, this time with this metallic brocade that is just absolutely delicious. Found this one on Etsy. It's got brown, it's got sort of a silvery mauvey pink. It's not actually silver, it's like a pink tone. It's got rust, it's got teal. We have a lot of different colors going on here. And I made this dress with a slightly raised neckline, tips up at the sides, has a V in the front with this little side peplum to it as well. The sleeves turn out a little bit big on this, so I have them scrunched up here, but that's a bit of a different look anyhow. I made this dress over on Patreon recently. And I paired this with that same leather belt again, my cicada beaded brooch again, and then some turquoise and brass earrings and a little teal clutch and some teal suede heels to match the teal trench coat we have going on here. This again was another Poshmark find. This is a black and teal iridescent shot fabric trench coat from London Fog. It has a full wool lining on the inside that you can zip in or out depending on if you need a wool layer. It's very cozy but it is also very 80s and you can tell this is from the 80s by the size of the shoulder pads in this because they are just a bit much and seeing as it's not exactly a designer piece probably will take these shoulder pads out of this one, which is unusual for me, but in this case, I think warranted. I will save them, but I just don't think they're for me. But speaking of outfits that can intimidate your realtor, this is kind of my space admiralty dress uniform. That's how I think of this outfit. It really looks like a, a sharp space admiral look to me, which I, I'm not really into. I'm not a very militaristic pe person, but if they're handing out titles, you know, I'll, I'll take one. I made this suit recently over on Patreon, or at least the jacket. It does have a double princess seam. It's something I want to experiment with more and will be bringing to the channel later in the year. I paired this with some petrol blue slash teal gloves here, copper jewelry, including this brooch I found at Boss Vintage here in Denver. And then again, my chocolate brown faux fur and this rust cord handbag clutch from the 1940s. But funny enough, I grabbed this fabric from Mood because they said it was a brown brocade. And then it arrived and it was this teal copper my burnt orangey rust color and green brocade. The other side actually features olive green in it as well, and you will be seeing the other side of the fabric later on in this video because I grabbed a couple of yards of this thinking it was brown. It arrived and it was every delicious color, but it wasn't it wasn't brown, uh, but it was teal and iridescent and so fun that I immediately went back onto Mood and grabbed the last four yards of it. So I cannot link you to this fabric because I, I bought the rest. So sorry about that but i think you can see why i absolutely fell in love and and had to have a little more and we're not done with the yummy jacquard fabrics as we know brocades slash jacquards are one of my favorite things to work with this fabric is a wool acetate and polyester lurex blend fabric that i grabbed from allen's here in denver this was a pricier fabric but i was trying to find something that really epitomized the word verdigris and i think this looks like oxidized brass, at least as it does to me. But yes, I made a pencil skirt, and then of course this suit jacket, which actually closes down the center front and has this lovely Cherry Mugler inspired neckline, tipped up neckline, and then the back of it is completely sequined and has sequin and beaded cicadas on it. I paired this with a patchworked metallic clutch, again from Boshmark, some vintage gloves that were a gift many years ago that I fit me perfectly, and I really love this gold tan color. Little cicada earrings and ear cuffs going on here. And then again, one of those faux fur shawls in a fox fur kind of colorway here. Again, I'll link anything I can link, I will link below. But yes, this jacket is very embellished with these lovely rectangular sequins. And don't worry, I'll have an entire video all about the pattern drafting, making, and embellishing of this jacket coming to you real soon. This is the other side of that fabric where you can see, actually I have a two-tone split wrap back top here where one side is the same color as that suit we saw before and now I have the other colorway for the skirt and the other side of this jacket. So I loved both sides of this fabric so much that I wanted to utilize both. So I made that suit in the more teal side, and this is the more brown side of the fabric. It's still not very brown, but the brownish with a little bit of green and more of an animal print kind of effect to it, a little bit more textured. But you saw me do another one of these wrap back tops in two colors like this, or in this case, two different sides of the fabric. I made a green and black one that you saw in Verity. Uh, so you may have noticed that top exists in my wardrobe already. Again, I have a lot of these wrap back tops. It's just my favorite thing ever. I paired this with coordinating but not matching 
brass cuffs on either wrist here, or high wrist, I suppose, and then an antique brass metal mesh belt that I found out thrifting for like $3 last year, a 1940s brooch that has a little bit of patina to it, so it's kind of between brass and copper. This velvet jacket was another Poshmark find. I think I typed in steampunk jacket and this came up. It's a little like 1990s Ralph Lauren inspired uh, 18th century frock coat almost inspired jacket that I was really happy to pick up. Again, you can get things on Poshmark for really inexpensive, which makes it incredibly dangerous. This isn't an ad for Poshmark, by the way, but it's starting to sound like one. And then we have this strange sort of like, I, I don't know, priestess tarot card looking fairy outfit. It's a little bit like if someone called me and said, Bianca, we're going to the Renaissance Fair tomorrow, I would pull this out, I think. Uh, it, it didn't come together exactly how I had planned, but I made this stays inspired, fully boned and embellished bodice in one day. So that will be a fun video coming to you soon. It's kind of like a project runway challenge where I made this entire top, uh, embellished it. It's fully boned, fully lined, and these little drapey sleeves, this little cape slash veil attachment thing that gets attached to the back shoulders here. Uh, all this I made in one day. <laughs> so one very mad day, and I will detail that more in the project video for this coming up soon. I do want to make some changes to this pattern in the future, but for one day I think this isn't half bad, right? And I was going to wear this Czech rhinestone necklace that I picked up last year. Um, it's like this big Czechoslovakian rhinestone necklace from some time in the 20th century. I was going to wear this as a necklace, and I put it on. It just looked a bit heavy, filling in this neckline. And then I decided, what if I just threw this on my head? So that's how that happened. I just decided to wear it as a bit of a tiara. I'm not sure it works with my very short hair, but, you know, we were, we were cobbling together at this point. But yes, this Stays Inspired top will be coming to you soon. I do want to make some modifications and play around with this style a little bit more in the future. I hope you enjoyed today's selection of steampunk inspired outfits and thank you so much to my patrons for making my work possible and special thanks to my conservative patrons alicia amy audra cheryl karina denise elizabeth ellen eloquent silence fern jambonium laney lilith linda lynn hamilton and lynn olson maggie margaret megan myrna nancy natalie Rachemus, Rhonda, Sean, Stephanie, Swingularity, Thea, Tracy, Ula, and Zara. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you to all of my patrons and all of my viewers for making my dream job possible.